everything in the car today so I'm gonna pile on some water that I purchased this week. Um, usually sometimes we get it donated right now we haven't been getting any donations in so I've been purchasing them from Sam and um, I think I still have some in the car. So I'll bring water. So all these boxes right here that you see um, they haven't all been labeled yet but all of these boxes right here represent 100 Bag, um, um, love bags. So right here you'll see this is a thousand, this is a hundred, this is eleven hundred that are totally completed. These we just got toothpaste in. I was able to buy in bulk, so we got about two thousand two toothpaste in last week. But these have to go back and be um, reinserted, assembled with the toothpaste because we have now we have one, two, three, four. We have four thousand four hundred that don't have toothpaste. So we'll go back and reinsert those. But basically, in my sitting at home watching TV, that's what I've been doing, stuffing bags. So once you get moving, you don't realize how many bags you've been stuffing. Um, we've been blessed to be able to get boxes from um, U-Haul in bundles. So again, your donation goes to all of these things that we need to make this happen. And so uh, once we get 100 increments, we put them in a box. Over here is where we keep, usually keep our extra inventory, depending on what we have and when it comes in. So, you know, again, we try to buy in bulk. Um, we did get in some large bath size bars of soap that we'll be just um, giving to our senior citizens and families that are in need. We try to keep this stock of sanitary napkins. We actually purchased these from Walmart. Um, also, we have deodorant, we have a few pairs of socks left. Um, so that's why we continue to just put the plea in, plea out. 
that we need donations to come in because even though we do a lot of work, um, we, we can't do it if we don't have the supplies. So this is what I pretty much do. This is like, that was the first stop home. This is the second stop and I load up the car. And then I was blessed today to have him with Barry on the other end of the camera uh, to go out with me today. Usually sometimes I can get a couple of other volunteers from the first team to go out if they're not busy. A lot of people work from home. Um, but a lot of the times it's something to storage by myself and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, this month was mental awareness month. And um, about six years ago, seven years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, bipolar anxiety, OCD, and um, anxiety. And so with all of this pandemic going on, I had my own struggle with my severe depression. And so doing things like this keeps me active. Um, I know it seems like a lot, but for me, it's, it's what I need to keep my heart going, to keep my mental um, stability going. And knowing that we're helping someone just means so much to me personally. And I'm just grateful that I've never had a great group of people who see the vision, who see what I'm trying to do, and have just poured their love and support behind this. Um, and then, like I said, those who really know me, they know my struggle, they know you know, I was homeless, they know they've been there with me. And so when, when I go out and give someone a bag, it's not even a, a touching what they probably need, because of course they need a shelter. But at that moment, just to know that someone took the time, someone sat on the floor and put a bag together, someone went to the store and got some washcloths and, and ordered some toothbrushes and put it in a bag and brought it to them, make a world of a difference. So I don't encourage people to, you know, do thousands of bags if you can, great. But if you could just, you know, when you're out and pick up a, a, a snack bag, put it together, keep it on your front seat. So when you see someone at the, at the stop sign with your mask in safe distance, be careful, but it's okay to share love with people. I mean, I'm telling you right now without the city really being open and at its full capacity, there's so many people who are just digging in the trash can trying to find a meal. There's so many people, it's so hot now, um, moving into the next couple of months, you know, just a bottle of water is, is, is a necessity to someone to keep them alive. And of course, we now know that soap saves lives. And so you first, we, I have been begging and pleading just to get soap so that we can make sure that we get it in the hands of people who are experiencing living without walls and those who are now experiencing not having a job. And so if they have to decide between buying some hygiene items or food, if you first can be that component to say, hey, we'll give you, you know, what we have, then that makes a world of a difference to a household that may have, um, you know, uh, five or six people and, and having to make that decision. So th these are some of the things, the, uh, the reasons why I do what I do. Um, we've been blessed and fortunate. And right now we've been up and running for six years. And like I say, during a pandemic like this, people who usually donate to us are not working. So our donors who, you know, would donate five, 10, $25, a month would keep us going but now this is the time and even though we're trying to continue to um, you know bless people this is a time now where we are in need because if we can't stay afloat um, you know we're, we're going to be a part of that um, economic um, um, environment that doesn't survive there are a lot of restaurants and there are a lot of places that won't come back and so when you're talking about nonprofits who you know I don't take a salary you know we're not in, you know we don't have staff to pay um, so we don't fall in the category of getting some of those those uh, funding stimulus packages. So I'm just you know just sharing with you a day that um, in the life of Project You First. But we're committed. As long as we have things to give, we're going to give. As long as money is coming in and we can purchase things, we're going to do it. Um, you know I go to Walmart in the morning and pick up washcloths. Sometimes they have inventory, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, and I know with all the pandemic and everything going on, a lot of people are fearful about volunteering and I understand that. And so that's why we don't really connect as like we used to have like 30, 40 volunteers in one place. But we're gonna come back, we're gonna come back strong. We're gonna be stronger than ever and we're gonna keep the heart on our chest and we're gonna make sure people know that we're putting them first. And so I just wanted to share with you guys what, what I'm doing, even in the midst of a pandemic, showing you guys that I'm, I, my boots are on the ground and have wonderful people behind the scenes that are, are really uh, blessing. So we're gonna go out this morning, we're gonna give those things out. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. We uh, won't be videoing that, but I just wanted to show you guys how the process works, how we prepare, how we keep this moving. You know, even without a warehouse, even without a building, you know, a lot of times when I tell people, when they say, well, Erica, how do you get started? Well, God gave me a vision, 3.30 in the morning, August the 7th, and I woke up writing in parables like Paul, and I didn't know what it was. And
and then, you know, go to this church and, and we're talking about our purpose. And the next Sunday, as I'm sharing with these ladies that I didn't even know in this church, that I, I know that my purpose is to give people who are in need the simple necessities after seeing a lady under the bridge washing her hair. And so the following week, I get to church and two ladies that I didn't even know bring a, a crate and they have all of these. Um, um, uh, sanitary napkins and washcloths and I was like okay God I guess you want me to get started and so I did so I put them in boxes shoe boxes first right and I put them in the pantry and they didn't really move the way I thought they should so I put them in a ziplock bag put them in a ziplock bag took them to the streets and that was it so once I got out to the streets I gave one bag to one guy and it touched my heart just to see his eyes light up to know that first someone stopped to talk to him eye to eye contact and listen to his story. And so that's a lot of things, that's one thing that a lot of people, you know, we have this misconception of when we talk about homelessness, it's not just a person under the bridge, it could be someone who's couch hopping, it could be kids who are in foster care who's about to foster out. It could be a number of things that put people in that situation. So I know even in the black community, that stigma comes behind that, even with mental illness. But we have to remove the change. We have to take the barriers off. We have to take the blockage down. And we have to start looking at people as human beings. And so no matter how they got in that situation, no matter what you know, um, brought them into that, them being out there, with no judgment, we go out and we give. Because at the end of the day, when I went through my um, experience, somebody gave to me. Somebody helped me. And so um, and that's why I fight so hard to do this because you know, on a day that average, if we're at home sheltering in, people who experience homelessness who are not in shelter, they don't have that luxury. So they don't have the luxury to walk to the refrigerator and get a bottle of water or make, uh, make a sandwich. So I know that, you know, 200 bologna sandwiches is probably, you know, nothing to somebody. But to somebody who don't have anything right now to eat, it's everything. So again, I love you. We got to roll because we got we to move. I wanted to show you your first home. Um, <laughs> home away from home and again I'm working from uh, my apartment and so thank you guys so much for your support um, continue to follow us on Facebook um, LinkedIn um, YouTube uh, Project You First You First was the name that God gave me but um, it ended up just catching on being Project You First so we are You First legally but as an known Project You First I love you, I love you, I love you be kind to someone, peace and blessings to you